everyone, Zeddy here again, and it's this week in Hearthstone time. Haven't done one in a little bit. We had the expansion launch and just a tad bit of drama, but we're over all that. We're moving on to some fun stuff, and we want to go, let's go back in time. Let's not worry about current day Hearthstone. Let's go back to a simpler time when, you know, Hearthstone was fun, and we weren't stuck quarantined and all this stuff. We could have group gatherings and go celebrate the game of Hearthstone. So let's take a look at the 2017 Hearthstone World Championships. Uh, we had Tom versus Frozen in the final. Uh, they had qualified through the whole system back in 2017. There was no Grandmasters, nothing like that. Um, there was the HCT playoff system. You had to get enough points to qualify for playoffs. And through playoffs, you could qualify for a championship. There was the uh, spring, winter, and I think fall championships. Uh, four players would qualify from each one. And then there was like the top point earners from ATT, like top ladder finishers and all like the open cups and stuff would also get in for 16 competitors. And there were some notable names in there, of course, our, our finalists in Tom and Frozen. You also had Pavel. He managed to make it back trying to reclaim his throne as world champion from the prior year. Uh, Dr. Jink and Nikki was there, Stiana uh Doc Pone was like kind of the underdog story there. And yeah, it was a pretty eventful event and it led to the finals between Frozen and Tom. And it was quite the finals. It, it started off in Frozen's favor and then Tom tried to claw his way back. So we're going to step in at game number two with Frozen up one to nothing in the series. He's taking his, I believe, his Razakis Priest back in the day. No Reno Priest, but Razakis Priest with Raza unnerfed, all that stuff, against, I believe, a Keliseth Rogue from Tom. So let's skip ahead and take a look at that game. Here we are, Frozen versus Tom, Razakis Priest versus Keliseth Rogue. So if you aren't aware, Prince Keliseth was a two-mana legendary. He was a two-mana 2-2. Two -two. And if you had no other two-cost card minions in, or two-cost cards, period, in your deck, you would give all minions your decks plus one, plus one. So the deck only had Keliseth as two-drop. People figure, it's not going to see play. You can't run like Sap or Viscerate. No, it's great. And you can Shadow Step it and all that. So Tom here, he's got a Swashburgler in hand against Frozen's Norshar Cleric on one. Again, uh, Frozen's playing Razakis Priest, built very much like Reno Priest is right now. You have Raza, you have Anduin, and you go Infinite Pew Pew, all that stuff. But you didn't have Reno back in this. Uh, Reno was already in Wild, couldn't play it, so you didn't have that big heal. But you had other stuff, you had like Priest of the Feast, stuff like that. And Tom is not going to play Swashburglar. Basically, Swashburglar, he plays it, Frozen could trade in, heal up his minion, and draw a card. And now Tom's in a bit of a tough spot here. He's got two Swashburglars, not much of a play. He's going to dagger up, pass. He can consider swinging here. He doesn't really have a good turn four. He might have to dagger again and maybe go into coin like Vile Spine, coin Cobalt. But yeah, um, this old Keliseth Rogue deck was very tempo based, very aggressive. You had like Bone Mares. Um, Vile Spine back in the day was really solid. It's a five mana, three, four minion combo, destroy a minion. Very powerful effect. And Frozen's hand's looking pretty good here. Uh, you can see he's playing an unnerf or unbuffed Holy Smite. It only dealt two damage. Damage his own cleric, draw a card. He's got Kazakis on four, Raza five. He's looking pretty solid here. And also back in these days, uh, the old Razakis Priest, you were much more miracle uh, draw dependent. A lot of people ran Auctioneer to cycle. Um, you had Wild Pyro, Northshire Cleric, Circle of Healing to draw. Uh, you had a lot more ways of drawing. You didn't have Pulk Out, just two to your combo, stuff like that. So it was uh, much different. And we can see Tom not going to sit around. He's not going to stop developing. He's going to get on board. Um, he gets a Holy Fire and an Obsidian Statue. Probably not what he's looking for, but at least he has some presence on the board. Frozen here has an interesting decision. He can trade, draw a card. He can develop Kazakis, Circle of Healing, heal up his minion, get a potion, draw a card as well. And Powered Shield, as you can see, costs one mana. It would give plus two health and draw a card. This was a staple on Priest forever until it recently got changed in the Priest rework. So Frozen's in a really good position here ahead um, all the draw, there's a lot of draw available, and again, once that Raza hero power comes down, you get a free two healing every single turn, which can be incredibly powerful. And Frozen picks up Wild Pyro with Cleric on the board. So you can see Tom Topdex a Bone Mare, it's 5-5, unnerfed back, and it was ridiculously good 
One of the most busted cards ever. It was a sleeper, and my god, what a good one. I also see Tom's holding Serenite Chain Gang. This was before it was nerfed, um, where it just summons another Serenite Chain Gang. Here it would get a copy of itself. So if he had Keliseth on two earlier, right? It'd be a 3-4-3-4. Three, four, three, four. Both copies would be copied. Or if he had Keliseth, Shadow Step Keliseth, it would be copied. But yeah, Tom's forced to coin Vile Spine. Get rid of that pesky cleric. Five mana to remove a one drop cleric. It's one of the best priest minions you could ever have. And again, easy play from Frozen. Get that Raza down. Get that free hero power established. And he's got Auctioneer in hand. He can start cycling. He's got that Nether Spite Historian. Um, if he gets a dragon, he can discover another dragon. And that could be very, very solid. Uh, especially the Discover bonus still existed back in the day. So you could easily get a Draconid Operative and stuff like that. So yeah, Tom's just going to Shadow Step, Vile Spine able to remove the uh, Raza, but again, he's not developing much. His deck is meant to be aggressive, tempo-based, and he's just not really getting any tempo, any aggression down on Frozen's Razakis Priest, and you give this deck time, it's not going to lose, especially in the late stages of the game. You can see that uh, Frozen top deck Mind Blast. Mind Blast was in there, basically as your win condition, your end game. You would profit Velen and Mind Blast for 10 damage, and you could also Hero Power each time for 4 since Velen would, you know, make your hero power uh, double its damage. There's a lot of reach. You typically didn't have to OTK with um, your Rizakis Priest. It was more of a chip down affair. That's why Druid could beat it. Uh, J Druid was very popular. We'll see that deck later. Uh, it could quite, it could out armor it. But anyways, uh, Frozen, he's going to go for a cheap one mana spell. Probably save it, get his Auctioneer turn going in maybe a turn or two. Um, there's not that many zero mana spells they can utilize, but... You know, he picked up deal three damage, son of friendly minion that died this game. Get a little bit, he just wants to fight Temple on the board. Um, you can see Tom picked up a Bone Mare, used to be seven mana, five, five, get plus four, plus four, and Taunt still is eight mana. One of the cards I thought that might get reverted, but yeah, you can see he's got that in hand, and he doesn't have the greatest of plays right now. Um, he could trade, develop a Serenite Chain Gang and a Bone Mare, potentially, but he's going into, like, I believe Psychic Scream was in the game at this point. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like he's going into the Psychic Scream turn. And you probably don't want to get too overly committed, so he's not going too wide. And yeah, here we go. Um, Frozen, he's going to get the Auctioneer. He gets at least two draws here. He's got the one mana spell. Remove something, resummon. If he gets Cleric, he can get some additional draws. Cleric has died. And he gets Cleric, which will give him an additional draw since his Kazakus is damaged. And yeah, he's got Spirit Lash in hand now, which could be really good with Velen on 9, often Arena. He's picked up the Radiant Elemental. He can use the Silence if he wishes to draw one more card, but Silence can be good against a lot of stuff, including a Bone Mare buff thing. Um, if you got Edwin, a big Edwin, potentially. A lot of these lists didn't run Edwin, but I believe Tom's did. We'll see in a little bit later game. So yeah, again, uh, Tom not in the best spot. He can get a Temple play here. He can trade um, with a... Trade with the Cleric, get the Bone Mare down, get the Vile Spine down. He can do some good stuff here, but again, it's uh, so far behind. Like, uh, Frozen's at full health. His deck is going to win the late game. Once Frozen gets that Anduin online, it's basically lights out. Like, he's going to have the flexible hero powers, and it's just not basically any way that Tom will be able to stay on board. And outside of, like, Leroy shenanigans, there's only so much reach he can do. But he's going to... He's going to establish here. He's got Vile Spine, Chain Gang. He's going to hold the Bone Mare, potentially play around Anduin. But um, he might have to just all in here. Like, he's so far behind, but he's going to hold the Bone Mare. Um, you, you're going into turn 8. That's the Anduin turn. But I feel like if he's Anduin here, you're going to lose anyways. Kind of like going in all in on the Corridor Creeper there, personally. you got to win the game. But yeah, uh, Frozen finally picked up a Dragon, so he can Nether Spite. Bookworm kills a minion with 3 attack or less. Get the Vile Spine down, and yeah... Tom, he's got a Serenite Chain Gang on board, and that's about it. Not a lot going on. He's got to start pushing some aggression. He top decks Elven Minstrel gear, and he can start cycling potentially minions. Elven Minstrel was a combo minion, 4 mana, 3, 2, draw 2 minions. One of the better uh, rogue minions ever made. It was just let you cycle through your deck really well. It was really good with Shadow Step. Really solid card. One of my favorite rogue cards, and it was like in every archetype. It's like... Sometimes you put in, like, a combo deck, and all you had was Malagos, and, like, you would draw your Malagos with your Necrium Blade and just do ridiculous stuff. So, yeah, Frozen, he's going to keep digging, trying to find uh, his Anduin. He's only got 10 cards left in his deck. 
Um, there's, you know, not that much left. And once he does that, he basically has lethal in hand. He's got Velen. He's got Radiant. He's got Mind Blast. He's got a Silence. He can pretty much kill uh, Tom down from nothing. But uh, you know, he topped at Curious Glimmer Root. That was a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three, and you basically, it showed three cards that started in your opponent's deck and discover the right one or whatever. And the only one of them would ever be correct. And it was always class cards. And since you knew their deck, you always knew what your opponent was playing. It was always basically a free card. So he's going to play it. He's going to get shown three cards. And well, yeah, he knows he runs SI Agent. He's going to take it. Nobody runs Assassin Blade. Nobody, nobody runs the Scythian Shard. So yeah, it's a little bit better than that the uh, Glimmer Root card that's currently in the game right now. That you have to just guess what's in your opponent's hand. And all the cards will be correct. So... He clears most of the stuff. He leaves up the Bone Mare again. He's not threatened here. There's a 5-5 five, five and more. He's at 30 health. He's got a full hand. He's got a bunch of healing. And Tom is just somehow has to find a way to apply pressure here and actually kill Frozen. And I just don't see it. Let's see what he does. He probably starts with the Creeper into Minstrel. See what he can draw. He probably wants to set up... Um, I guess he doesn't set up Edwin. He just kills the Vile Spine. I imagine you gotta push face here. There's no point in trading at this point. Yes, if he has Anduin, you lose your minion, but you're never winning from this position. But I don't really see a way outside of Frozen having 10 unplayable cards in hand to lose. He's got Dragonfire, he's got Lash, he's got a multitude of options. Uh, Dragonfire looks pretty good here. Um, one of the reasons that there's a Cobalt uh, in hand for Tom, the Dragon, the 5 5 Dragon, was it helped play around Dragonfire wouldn't die to this because it dealt five to everything except dragons and yep frozen just gonna take the board dragon fire establish an si agent push some damage and again tom just does not have a lot going on he could drop the ascidian statue it's really annoying for a priest uh four attack life seal big big body could go for that or he could just you know set up the bone mare get the south sea captain going and just pray that frozen does not have anduin because that gets wiped out by Anduin pretty well. And there's the top deck, Anduin. That locks it up. He's got lethal basically next turn. Tom's out. He knows the deal. Once Anduin's online, the game is over. And here we go, Frozen. Up 2-0. If he wins one more game, he's world champion. And somebody, somebody in production didn't get the memo that this was just 2-0, not 3-0. And with the crowd going crazy... Frozen, one game away from a world championship. And a bit of an embarrassing moment happens. You get to see a little bit of an embarrassment, and it was an unfortunate foreshadowing. The confetti goes off like Frozen had already won the world championships, and you get to see the crowd doesn't know what to make of it. Is it time for Frozen to be the champ? He's up 2 nothing. All he's got to do is win one more. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, Tom came back. To make it two to one, he defeated Frozen's priest with his um sorry he defeated Frozen's Jadrid with his own Razakis priest, and now it is time for Rogue Tom's Rogue versus Frozen's Jade Druid, and you have you see a card in hand here for Tom Edwin Van Cleef, and I wanted to just highlight this game to demonstrate that Edwin Van Cleef has always been broken, so. You can see Tom here gets an Innervate from his Swashburglar. Swashburglar would add a random card from your opponent's class to your hand. And Innervate was nerfed. It's not the two-mana variant. But he's got an Innervate in hand with Edwin, Coin, Backstab. And, well, you're going to see. You're going to get a quick demonstration of how Edwin has been around and has helped decide almost every world championship known to man. Because that card is busted. I can't believe it's still in the game. But let's take a look. So you have the play here. Tom's got four mana to work with. He could just deckhand, coin, innervate, backstab Edwin. Have a giant Edwin. And really no way for Frozen to deal with it. Um, he can wait a turn. Dagger. And then do, you know, get the damage in with Ed, uh, with the deckhand. But we'll see what he does here. We'll see if we get a balanced Edwin turn. A three mana two two turn. But no. When you got that Edwin, you go for it. And yeah. What is Frozen going to do? You can see his reaction. You can tell from what's going on. Edwin is no mere three mana two two. He is one of the most broken cards in Hearthstone history. And he's still in standard today. Turn two ten ten from Tom. That's a three turn lethal setup here. And yeah, just get a jam face, dagger, 
go face. And uh, yeah, Frozen right now, he's got a Jade Blossom. He's got a Mark of the Lotus. He's got a swipe, but he's got no way to deal eight damage to this Edwin. So what he could do here, which is probably the way to go, I guess, is Violet Teacher, Mark of the Lotus. Try and just get something on board to fight this Edwin off. Um, it still barely presents enough stats to kill it, but it looks like the swipe the next turn can finally kill the Edwin, but it's going to deal 20 damage. And Tom's got Leroy in hand. He's got Leroy in hand. So we'll see what he picks up here. He's going to Swashburglar into an Aya. Oh, yeah. Frozen down to 7 health. Giant Edwin on board. Leroy in hand for Tom. Not quite lethal if uh, Frozen gets the hero power in. But we'll see. He might be tempted to, to wild growth. He might feel he'll need to take that risk. And that's going to be a tough one to make. So we'll see what he does. He has to swipe. Otherwise, he cannot clear. Um, he can swipe the Edwin. And it, it all comes down. Does he hero power or does he wild growth? Does he think Tom has Leroy in hand? And he goes for the wild growth. Sealing his fate. Um, I don't know if I agree with that play. He's got eye in hand, but again, he's got to get some mana flexibility because he's got very little way of dealing with what's on board. But yeah, as a result of the non-hero power, just like that, that game, 2-2, two, two, Tom, Frozen. One game will decide it all, and it's going to be a mirror between Frozen's Jade Druid and Tom's Jade Druid. So let's skip ahead to that final match. Oh, we are at the final game, and will that confetti come back to haunt frozen was that early confetti actually just an ominous horrible unlucky thing obviously had nothing to do with it or will he prevail and defeat tom um one of the most famous parts of this game most like iconic parts is the mulligan stage um both players make a very interesting decision and really it has a huge outcome on the game um, so we're going to take a really close look at this mulligan. It's very important. So here we go. We have Frozen Tom. They both have UI in their opener. Tom has summons. And the only card Tom keeps is UI. Frozen gets rid of his. And the, I don't know if you can hear the commentators in the background. Kibler and Froden are surprised he keeps it. Personally, I always kept UI in the mirror. You need that fuel. Like, UI is so important. Um, he didn't even have ramp. He just kept it. And of course, I mean, he got drew the ramp. He got growth. He got blossom. But again, UI is important. And he's got the ramp curve going. We got coin blossom from Frozen. And the J Druid mirror was basically who can ramp out faster, who can grab the board quicker, who can build bigger green men and win the game. Because it really is just about outpacing your opponent. Um, Poison Seeds wasn't around. You didn't have that big reset. If you lost the board, if your opponent just took the board and ran away with it, it was really hard to come back. So, um, you did have Spreading Plague. You had some ways of coming back, but it wasn't the greatest. Um, and right now, this Violet Teacher on board, uh, Tom doesn't have a great way of dealing with it. And Frozen's got five mana Nourish. He can ramp up here, but he doesn't have UI in hand. So, um... Back here, at this time, you rarely ever drew with Nourish. You would always just want to ramp and hit UI. That was always the strat. Uh, Fandral was four. You'd like to Fandral into Nourish. So you could also draw and gain the Crystals. But ultimately, the end goal was to try and get your ramp into UI. Because UI, 10 mana, deal five, draw five. It's incredibly powerful. You likely cycle through the remainder of your deck through that, right? You're going to hit other draw. So that's, again, why Tom keeps it. He knows how vital... UI is for that game plan, but again, he got lucky with in terms of getting the proper ramp, but we'll see. We'll see if it pays off for him. I think you know where I'm going with this, and if you've watched it, you definitely know. So yeah, there's wasn't much of a play there, and you see Frozen just kind of YOLO ramps. He doesn't have much draw. He has the paths in hand that could draw him two cards, and a big pickup for Tom here. He gets the Wrath. It synergizes really well with Fandral. He deals three, deals one, draws a card. He's got the 1-1 one, one, uh, Jade Golem on board to trade in. And he is looking pretty here. Um, he's got Jade Behemoth, which can give him another Jade, generate a taunt, and two turns, he's UIing, refilling his hand. Um, Frozen, he's got two choices here. He's got to deal with that Fandral, but he has no way of dealing with it. So he's going to develop Malfurion, and it'll be interesting to see. You have two options. You either go Scarabs, um, you get your 1-5 taunts, or 1-5 taunts, or you can go Spiders. And uh, a lot of times you go Spiders just to try and deal with the board. Like, he needs to try and kill that Fandral. He's going to try and put Tom to have removal to deal with these spiders. He's got a spell stone. Um, he can paths and 
armor up and trade his golem into one of the spiders to help protect. But I think you just start off with a draw and go from there. And then maybe you consider armoring. Um, he's just going to double draw. And he's got an interesting choice here. Well, not, not so interesting now. He picked up the wild growth. He could get the Jade Idol, shuffle one into his deck, um, and next turn UI. And shuffling the Jade Idol at this point is totally fine. Because, like I said, it's all about out-jading your opponent. And with Tom going into UI fully ramped, he's going to just start drawing. He's going to get his Jade Idols developed. And, yeah, Frozen's in a big problem. And you see, he doesn't have that UI in hand. If he had it right now, he could UI and get ahead on board. But... Instead, he's going to Violet Teacher, and he's got to draw here. He has no option. He'll probably draw, probably mark the Lotus, go from there. But he's got to find some fuel, because his hand is getting thin. Uh, Plague is horrible in the mirror. Uh, there's not much you can do. It's more of a good aggro option. And yeah, again, he does not pick up much draw. So he's got Mark of the Lotus. He can innervate out if he wants to get another token. Um, but it looks like he's going to hold on to the innervate. Could have generated a 1-1 token, but again, it's not the biggest of deals. And yeah, Tom's got UI here. He can clean up this Violet Teacher, develop uh, Arcane Tyrant. It's a 5-mana minion. If you uh, I think it's a spell that costs 5 or more. The minion became 0, so we can slam that down for free. It was really nice because you could draw it through your UI and just, yeah, slam a 0-mana 4-4. We see that in Standard right now with the 3-5 taunt. Similar thing, except this was neutral. And yeah, um, Frozen, he's going to drop the summons, cheat out of Fandral, get a Behemoth down, give the biggest board swing he's got. He's going to innervate out the Spellstone to, again, remove a minion. And yeah, this is his biggest board swing, but Tom's got a full hand. He's got a Plague he can answer this with. He could, like, Plague, Blossom, Idol, just build his Jades, and then potentially just UI again. And like I said, the UI just helps you fuel your hand so much. Um, instead, yeah, he's just ramping up the Jades. And like I said, this matchup's all about ramping up your Jades. And he knows that. And he can UI next turn. He's going to have six cards in hand. But he can just dump a Tyrant. He doesn't have to worry about overdrawing. And Frozen is just out of fuel. He's got the paths. That can be helpful. Can get him a bit more cards in hand. But he's got to find a UI. Like, now. And you see how crucial that UI was for Tom. Picks up Aya. Aya's an incredibly strong card in this mirror. It gave you not one, but two jades, getting your jade plan up. But again, the jades are still much smaller. Even the death rattle jade in the um, the Aya is a 4-4, four, four, and Tom is a 5-5. Five, five. I believe you just UI here. You just want to keep drawing, get the tyrant down, and uh, keep going on that board. He's probably just going to UI the 4-4 four, four that comes out of the Aya. He can get some value trades in if he wants. Definitely going to kill that Fandral. And uh, yeah, Tom only has like eight cards left in his deck. He's got two nourishes that can draw more. He can start developing more idols. I believe he still has one idol left in the deck. And it is just looking bad for Frozen. He needs a UI instead. He gets plagues that just don't do enough. It stalls a little bit. But when you're stalling and not removing, and Tom's is making bigger and bigger green men, as Day Nine would say, you're in trouble. And it's looking pretty bleak. Kind of wishes he had that UI. He actually had two UIs in his mulligan, I think. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a surprising, it was to me, when I watched this back in the day, it was surprising to me. I played a lot of Druid. I played a lot of Druid at this point, and I'm up to like 5k wins already. And I just felt like UI was kind of a snap keep in the mirror, because you just have to have it. But, um, you know, you, there's a very good chance you're going to draw it later in the game, right? You're nourishing, you're pausing, you're drawing naturally. There's a good shot you're going to get it, so maybe the math was right on it. I mean, I'm sure he knew what he was doing. But this game, this variance, this sample size, it just doesn't look great. And yeah, again, Tom just further developing. Frozen, he's got Plague. That's about it. He's got the Behemoth. He's got Growth. He can use an Excess Mana. Try and find something to work with here. But it, it's getting out of control. And there, like I said, no Poison Seeds. No real reset. I don't think there's a Yog saron to be had here. Uh, Frozen just in a world of trouble. Up 2 nothing, Confetti going off already. And it looks like we're getting that reverse sweep. The Malfurion armor, not really going to be good enough when you have infinite green men. And oh my goodness, that Aya is going to give a 7-7 seven, seven minion for Tom. He can just slam that down. He can swipe, clean up the board, and the game is basically wrapped. This is basically it. He's got a couple decisions to make. But I kind of like seeing Aya get a swipe down. Just clean everything up. You got. You don't even need to use swipe, honestly. You could pass. You could just do nothing at all. Whatever you want. 
He's just going to develop a bigger green man. I like it. You know, you basically clean up everything. And Frozen, he's staring down to 7-7 seven, seven, and 8-8 eight, eight, Jade Golem. There's a 9-9 nine, nine in the Aya. And he's stuck with just nothing in hand. You can see the misery. He finally gets the UI, but it's much, much too late. I don't see any way where he could ever recover this board. It's too large. And honestly, if Tom wants to go for the kill, he can just pads up for attack and just start smorking. There's no plague left. There's no there's no removal. You can see Tom, he doesn't want to throw this. He's in such a... We're watching this. Like, how, how are you stressed? You can't possibly lose for this position, but you don't want to mess it up. We'll see what the play is. I love just smorking the crap out of him, but he's going to play it safe. Probably look for that last Jade Idol. Start shuffling. Push attack. Whatever you want to do. That's the last Jade Idol. You definitely shuffle it. Um, and I like smorking. Just put attack on the board. There, there's just nothing he can do. And I think Frozen concedes. And there you have it. Your 2017 World Champion Tom came back down two to nothing. Uh, piloted the games pretty well. That mulligan choice, you can see how a single mulligan can literally decide world champion. And there wasn't really much like bad luck, terrible RNG. It was just draw order. That was it. There was no random effects that game. It's a really well piloted game. Of course he got lucky getting the growth on two. Blossom getting that growth on eight, on eight mana to get into the UI turn. But really well piloted. Unfortunate for Frozen, who's an amazing player. Um... I believe he got relegated, but came right back. I think he's still GM or he's not GM. I don't know. Anyways, and, um, awesome stuff. Really fun match. And uh, missed that classic Hearthstone, you know? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, always suggest other matchups to take a look at. These are a ton of fun for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, especially with all you know the negativity going around. Hopefully I can hit you guys up with a new tier list tomorrow. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. And stay salty, my friends.